saw this and it touched me. It's one I will always remember or connected or I thought, wow. Because on that day, you will see many. Because if my dad named me according to what he could not have thought, <laughs> my name would have been school fees. <laughs> <laughs> my sister name would be a house <laughs> Yeah, I met one person, and this girl, she was very, very good, very, very talented, a very good singer. But in the space, she wasn't getting the support in the media for us to be feed herself. What, what is the essence of communication? If the people are trying to communicate what I'm getting, then communication fails. It would be very risky to hear your story from another person. Don't assume your audience know about what you have to say to me. So, everybody. <laughs> And we saw a void in most of our stories being shared in outside Africa. Sometimes you hear some stories and from Africa, and then you, an African, you know the story is not true. And for example, there was this story about a child labor from a farming community that Al Jazeera broadcasted about. And then the farmers were like, they are taking them to court. It was really recent because the journalist told them to go along with the children so that they can take a video of the children helping them. But then at the end, they wrote child labor. So it was a banter between them. I think it's still in court as we speak. And such stories, we've heard so many stories in that form. So we started to get upon, we took it upon ourselves to organize this workshop to empower us to share our own stories. So that when we share our stories now, social media is very it's very fast. We can reach so many audiences and we can change some of these narratives. I recall when we began Visa, I asked myself a particular question, and that was, who better tells the story than the victim of the story? And this is my story, and I'm sure everyone knows my story right now. And you don't know my story, okay? If you go online and see our story, <laughs> at a point, my, my family will be like, please, it's okay, it's okay, stop telling our story, stop, that's okay. But what do you do? So who better tells the story than the victim of the story? I'd like to once again welcome you to be inspired with stories from Africa. And shock Bisa. If we were on one of our episodes, I would have said, once upon a time, and this is your favorite host, that you can say from so. But today, since it's a workshop, let me say a very big thank you for each and every one of you for coming to this particular workshop. And secondly, 
having this particular event, Africa Youth in Storytelling. Priscilla has said everything she wants us to know about this particular workshop. And very importantly, just an occasion to launch our competition, which is called My World, My Narrative. Do you say? My My We want us to tell our own stories. The stories that show us as individuals showing resilience, no matter what we are going through. Africa is Africa. It's a place for us. We've survived. Our ancestors have survived. We don't want people coming in to tell our own stories. We won't tell our own stories ourselves. With our particular vision of becoming the number one platform promoting inspiring stories in Africa, we want to empower communities to better their narrative. We want to also share indigenous knowledge and solution, and therefore it's in line with this particular question. I want us all to brace up, take everything that we are going to share in this workshop with all the speakers we have. We have two other speakers online. But the end goal of this particular workshop is we should be capacitated. When we leave this place, we should know how to tweet our messages. We should know how to talk to people about who we are as people because we are Africans. Africa is not Africa, but we are Africans. We go over one million dollars. <laughs> Oh my God! I'm sure. Today I have to go home with a physical one million dollars from yeah. here today. Yeah. But uh, any part of the knowledge I can get from this garden today can yeah. help me get that amount in the nearest future. Okay, thank you very much. Wow, we put it together for that. I'll take another one. From the video. Oh, I was thinking of my two. Which one? What is the What is the expectation given to you? Okay, the to be to Be able to relate and communicate with others. I find this expectation so broad. Yeah. That is cool. To relate and communicate. We want to develop your capacity in thinking. Yes? Okay, the present is I'm expecting to hear something new and indicative. I'm expecting to hear something new and indicated. Oh, it's been Religious expectation is to be endowed with more insights on story writing. Wow, on story writing. Should we take one more? Yeah, yes, yes, me. Um, I want to hear your expectation. Okay, okay. So, yeah, I think that's it. Okay, that's it. She is expecting to build new partnerships, mm -hmm. uh, new programs, and then collaborations. Wow, wow. Loving and sharing as well. <laughs> okay, I think we have that all settled. Please help me welcome Nana Abrant here, who serves as the founder of Awesome TNI. It's not easy to mention the name, so please put your hands together for Nana Abrant here, speaking to us on the power of storytelling and elements of narrative formation. Thank you so much. And I'm excited to be here and I happen to be appointed an author, a spoken word artist, and a wonderful founder of also Business Network International. So it is easy to present solutions, it is easy to come out with nice initiatives to tell the stories or to what we want to do. But if these things that we want to impact into our communities are beyond the capacity of our audience, then what we want to do will become a joke. I believe that is why Pizza has put this initiative together so that we will have a capacity built, we will actually be on that awareness to know that this is what we want to do for our community. Storytelling is one of the oldest, if not the oldest method of communicating ideas and images. The workshop has been mined. Environment has much to do with storytelling. Self-confidence is an important factor in storytelling and education is not an important factor when it comes to storytelling. Though it might widen your scope, but it doesn't, it's not based on that. So you have people who are artists who have never been to school before but they're excelling. Right? By you link it, the knowledge to actually enhance what to do for storytelling powerful. These are the elements. Actually, what I'm sharing with you are practical things. Because when you go to the net, you see what you have actually put down there. To be able to put that thing as a factor or have that element as something that you want to bring in mind, be able to produce that. And people. People are the greatest item in God's creation. To be a powerful storyteller, what you need? Ideas, people. 
things. Yeah, so these are the elements that comes to me to become a powerful storyteller. How do I become an effective or powerful storyteller? Now, how do I become? How do I become? Define your audience. Ask yourself, what kind of people are they? When Betty asked me to come and speak, I was like, okay, who are my target audience? How many people are we expecting? So that you wouldn't either, you wouldn't communicate about them or below them, but to them. And the next one is define your objectives. Why are you telling these stories? Is it to educate? Is it to inform? Is it to entertain? Is it to request an action? What I'm doing here is to inform you. The next one is to use words that will be understood. I can't go to a typical village and say, I am very excited to be here. How many people will understand ecstatic? But when I stand, I'm very happy. I know about 80% of the people who understand the word happy. What is the essence of communication? If the people you are trying to communicate what I'm getting, then communication fails. And the next one is ideas should be in a logical order. Ideas should be in a logical order. And to make your meaning complete. Don't assume your audience know about what you have to say. So this has, I've come here to say storytelling. I didn't assume, okay, everyone here knows storytelling. So the last not least, they are made, is to establish a reliable feedback system. To know if the message has been received properly. Tell me one of the steps. One of the steps are define, define your audience, audience, define your objectives, and use words that are Okay. Use simple sentences. Ideas should be in logical yeah. Okay, so in conclusion. Don't be a perfectionist. Read wide and feel free to share your story. There is power to touch the hearts and minds of the community. Storytelling is the gateway to imagination. Is everyone our hands get our legs? Wow, that was massive. That was so so massive. How many of us learned a lot from this particular presentation? Are you just raising your hand for normality? <laughs> I'll ask questions. So, okay, thank you so much. One thing I picked was the element of creativity, and today we're going to have that presentation. But before we go to the presentation, I wanted to crack our heads a little. If you have some of the sheets with you, we will want you all to brainstorm. If you had any story you would want to share, tell or hear, what would be the topic of that story? So why do Africans still keep quiet after being free from colonization? <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> What's the topic? Yeah. What's the topic? Okay. So I'm happy to save the child. Save the child. Wow. Okay. And who, who said that? You don't give a little background to why you said that? <laughs> okay, um, I think um, there has always been an inspiration for me in the community by finding yeah. so well. Um, in fact, most of the children. Just being in your heart. Yeah, and to be honest, I'm someone who really loves to see young girls with grades, especially with their talent and skills. So, um, I have I had I had met one person and this girl, she was very, very good, very, very talented, very good singer. But in the space, she wasn't getting the support in the media funds to even feed herself and take you know, care of herself. So she got herself a boy of course. And she opens it. And then at the end of the day, she thinks that she what she really wants to do. Because there's that thing, there's that um this day uh, having a trauma in the hands when they get uh, pregnant, they think everything is good. So I think I have a story to tell about this and I'm trying to do all of these things in the future. That is one thing I'm trying to write the story about this. Wow. That is what yeah. Wow, thanks for sharing that story. I think it resonates with almost every one of us here and count it the activity. Okay, let's hear two more and then we zoom to the next speaker. Okay, the way to bring this. The way to greatness. Okay, who wrote that? Do you want to explain a little? <laughs> um, yeah, um, I I see people. Like, I see people in some eyes. I feel sad. Like, 
you see the people who you drink, they are way out of situations, who don't have anything to look at, they have no children, they are in their fifties, they are in their sixties, and so you see that you can't count on anything in life. And and I compare them to other people, compare them to other people, they that they have achieved a lot of things for themselves. So I I want to find out um, what what's what's the way to what's, what's it? What's it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. How how were other people able to achieve it? Wow. And they find themselves um, in such a state. So that's that's the message. From the environment and climate action, as uh, you know, a person passionate about the environment and climate. So in Africa, yeah. you know, you know, Africa, we contribute less or less yeah. when it comes to you know, global emissions. Mm -hmm. Africa is the most affected. And as we speak, Africa is the most driest continent in the world. And then uh, the second story is story from up north, story from northern Ghana. Mm -hmm. I'm from the north and from Tamale. There are lots of things that we hear, especially widows living here down south. There are lots of stories we hear about northern Ghana. That's not true, huh? Yeah, sometimes, <laughs> you know, not before, because people know that I'm from the north, sometimes you approach with a question that you've never heard of. You've never heard about. But the stories are real here. But up north, they are not real. So these are stories that I don't know. Perhaps I'm, uh, I'm throwing a challenge to you guys. Let's, let's go to the north, or let's study what is in the north, and then tell it to people in the middle town. Okay, so I'm Lacey Lamb from the Nairobi, Kenya. I'm a knowledge and digital strategies. Um, I'm passionate about digital media and knowledge management method. I'm how to speak here. So this play is about this whole presentation is about storytelling and technology in, in the African perspective. Of the introduction of this whole presentation. And we are talking about storytelling using the act of building a narrative through various forms of communication, which are used to obtain, to educate, and to inspire or to pursue. We are able to promote our culture and preserve our culture through storytellers because we are able to understand where we all come from. There is also diversity. We are able to embrace each other and know each other. Our culture from different countries where we all come from. And also able to express our issues, threats, issues, social issues, and injustices, and also inspire creativity and in innovation. We were able to listen to other African, African fellow youth, African people, we were able to listen to their stories, we were able to be impacted, and also know how we're supposed to do, know how we're supposed to also share our own stories. Mm -hmm. Successful initiatives of this whole storytelling in the African context is through mostly the use of social media, mm -hmm. where storytellers are able to reach wider audiences and share more old stories. Next slide, okay. Mm -hmm. Storytelling and filmmaking. Mm -hmm. How 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 are they? Uh, what principles are we using in storytelling and filmmaking in Africa mostly? Through culture development, we are able to develop our culture through storytelling, through cultural reforming in progress. Okay, cultural symbolism, we are able to know our cultures and different cultures, our different diverse cultures from our own different countries in Africa. Realism, this is whereby we are able to know our own race stories through storytelling. And social commentary, we are also able to know to Social commentary is where we were able to understand ourselves and also communicate social commentary. And some of the examples of these African films that have been portrayed in storytelling is one, The Boy Who Can't the Wind, which is from Malawi. This film was produced in two years ago. I don't know if you had an opportunity to watch it. Has anyone here with us? Okay, one person has. Oh wow, it was a it, it, it is a nice thing when they commit it to you. The boy who can use the meal. Artificial intelligence software speed is maintained in Africa. And examples of this software that African storytellers are using to generate technology while showcasing our own stories is the use of ChatGPT, 
which was launched just the other day. And this one is good too. Mm -hmm. I know we've got a bit. Yes, 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 we have. Yeah, we've got more than if it's content images and pictures. There is lots of reports which is used to manifest. I don't know if anyone has ever used reports before. Yes. I haven't. <laughs> 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 it's not say you find content online and if it's because it's fine if you want to share it on your social media platforms, you can you can paraphrase that content, you put it on we post it paraphrasing things, you still go on your own kind of text to share. It paraphrases text initially. There is also my time which is used to create it in the video context. Anyone can use this when I said before? Okay, any type of AI software? Yeah. Okay, and which one? You said wire tune, wire tune. Yeah, wire tune, and that one is used to... And what's it useful? Um, so it's kind of using our grades, it's kind of giving you better options to make the sentences and words. And so if you make a statement that you want to make it formal, you can be free in some form of friendly. Yes. Did you get the response? No, actually. Okay, can you can okay. say it again. Okay, so when to can paraphrase your, your sentence, so then it can give you other options to some sentences or words. So you make a sentence, you want it to sound formal, you want a formal sentence of that your sentence, then what you can change it for you. And if you want it to sound friendly, you can also rephrase it and make it friendly. Okay. So be careful. Okay. Yeah, I have a and that. I guess you can watch Then, is there any other? Okay, none from the audience. Okay, cool. So, let's move on. How does AI software enhance human creativity? No, stay over. Okay, yes, lady. Yeah, yeah. How, how AI software are helping in enhancing human creativity? We see this the next generation where there is such a type of give us ideas in our context. We also see the enhancing of collaboration. We are able to collaborate in any such as in creating our content, in sharing our own African stories. There is enabling new forms of creativity. Where we are also becoming creative, more creative on these things, AI software. So, the ethical considerations of using artificial intelligence in storytelling when you are sharing your own stories. We think there is job displacement. Recently, there was a massive health. I think the most of African workers, I think. So, there is job displacement where AI can work, can surpass human efforts in doing work, and so companies and organizations are replacing people. Who they think their work can be done by AI. There is also impact on creativity. Mm -hmm. We've seen sometimes we're depending on these AI software so much that we are not able to think by ourselves forgetting that we are also more creative than these softwares. There is also biases where we are considering these tools more and not considering our own creativity. Next slide, please. And if the audience has any question, you can ask us if you want. Okay. Mm -hmm. So storytelling and animation. In how animation is enhanced storytelling in Africa? In how African storytellers are using animation to showcase our own stories? So you see there is innovation, there is accessibility where everyone can be able to access information that they all want when these animation tools. There is video representation where in animation, general uses videos and there are different kinds of videos to make sure anyone can send it from what to what you does it what or doesn't do it and it's also depending on age mm -hmm. how animation is reaching new audiences. So we've seen this language where you can be able to you can be able to translate like for our case we have like I don't know it's around two thousand languages. How many languages we have in Africa in the way anyone with that information? Now language is anyone who that has <laughs> Hello, I'm two thousand. Sorry. How much? Did you How many did you say, please? How many languages, Leah? 
Yes, I am. <laughs> How many are you going to I think around 2,000. I'm not sure of the specific <laughs> number, but I think it's around 2,000 because I know it. Okay. I think my children are going to Yeah. So we, we are able to use uh, African storytellers who are using animation to showcase our stories. They are able to use the text, so they are able to translate these other languages so that every other African can understand what they are portraying on the visuals. There is also universal things where our, our own storytellers are using different things that have different audiences and they are, they, their stories are engaging with the animation. So this game is a very simple game. It's more like going to stadium, right? Yeah. 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 Now what you're supposed to do is to send the egg from one position to another. The final destination is 10 marks. why we really are comrades in this mission of pushing and promoting positive storytelling on Africa. The original cuts right across. Don't just think because you're one person and your thoughts are original, that's enough. You will may enter other spaces where you have to be original with a story that's been told a thousand times, okay? So that's really important. Is there anything that anybody wants to say I saw this and it touched me. It's one I will always remember or connected or I thought, wow, because on that day you will see many. The other thing that's really important is emotional resonance. You know, tapping into the audience's emotions. Um, of course, this can be done in, in, in many different ways, whether it's humor or drama or both, but it's really about creating a lasting memory, you know, that that connection that, um, you know, whether it's about the character or the themes, if whatever you're watching, reading, listening to conjures up or evokes emotion, you're certainly going to remember that. And so emotional resonance is really important and, and so on. So emotional resonance is extremely important. Okay, next is visualization. Now. If we're talking about, you know, because I'm using different mediums, it could be books, it could be, but if I'm, if I'm talking about a book now, writing, here's a picture. Um, you, we can do this, you know, I think we will all remember, we all know books we've read where we've been transported because the writer is so brilliant at painting a picture. You are there. I mean, when I used to run a book club, we learn about history through novels and it was the best way to do it uh, because of all these all the, the fantastic history devices that we use whether you know you could use sensory devices as well so whether it's about the sound whether it's about the sight what you hear all those things that are evoked through writing really has an impact okay authenticity Really, it's got to be believable, even if it isn't. We call it suspend, suspension of disbelief. Because it's so, it is, it's so convincing, it could be a fantasy. But if you use other devices, whether it's the characters that are believable because of the dialogue or what have you, it's so important that you are able to have that buy-in, even for a moment. Whether it's the length of a film, or the book, 
whatever it happens to be, supernatural, it is important that it's authentic. And like I said, by authenticity, I mean just believable. It has to be, you need to be able to give up your, what do we call it, judicial mind. <laughs> for a second, and, um, you know, be transported there and enjoy that experience. Okay, playfulness. Now, this by playfulness, I mean where you're just like the beginning could be at the end, right? You're just playing around. It could be you're playing with the words. It could be playing around with the scene. A story doesn't have to go in a judicial structure, yeah? So suspense is always a hook. Um, just experiment. This is another way that, you know, uh, this is another creative tool that really hooks the reader. You know, when you're creating curiosity, suspense, and, and, and just getting the audience to stay engaged. And I'll just give you a few examples. I remember, I mean, we all know, like, with the public viewing, right? Um, and we're watching a, uh, years ago, I remember when we had public viewing in Ghana, um, the opening cinemas. You would have a whole crowd screaming, crying, the ooing, and the aahing. They were responding to a film, a story that works for them emotionally. We also know with, uh, whether it be our Gallywood or Nollywood stories, they have the music. And that is the cue to say something dangerous is coming. And or there's, there's happiness or there's peace at last or when there's sickness, when there's sadness, when we're meant to feel melancholy. There are all these devices that they use with sound, with the pictures, the work. These are all creative tools. And you know, clearly sometimes you may think, oh, uh, uh, the audience isn't stupid. They know the, the, what I'm trying to say or what the story I'm trying to tell. Let me tell it all. But the point is there are so many creative tools that can be used to enhance that experience. So what do you want out of the storytelling or the story? You want it to be remembered. So don't undermine uh, the power of using creative tools. Okay, <laughs> like who is on the other side of the window? Who's he going to shoot? Blah, 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 you know, so. Um, and that, again, some really kind of appropriate music. Could, I mean, there's some certain films I can't watch. And that's, much, that's just one genre of storytelling because my, my, <laughs> my heart, my stomach, everything just won't allow me. I can't just, I have to close my eyes. And I, some of you may be the same, where you just can't watch on oh, because you, you know it's not real, but you have suspended your disbelief. You are there, you are scared or you're crying. These are all fantastic. The director, I'm talking visually, of course, right now, but this is all deliberate. This is all, you know, as um, one of my colleagues would say, they have achieved the objective by getting you to feel that way. Okay, next please. Okay, so in conclusion, I said this was a good one, didn't I? So, fresh, find fresh and inventive ways, innovate, yeah, because you want to be remembered, you want that story to be remembered. Tap into the emotions and experiences of the audience, yeah? It could be a related, you know, you want them to also have that experience, or just because they've had the experience before, they can relate. Um, so emotions are very important, and you know, clearly create powerful and impactful stories that are remembered. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so, it's really important, and this is, again, in line with the whole kind of storytelling, especially in Africa. And I leave you, before we go to the films, with a quote by Shinya Achebe. Until the lions have their historians, the history of the hunt will always glorify the hunt. Mm -hmm. So, as creatives, we, it's imperative that we tell our own story. And we tell it in a way that gets an audience. So whoever you're writing um, for, whoever you're creating for, I should say, um, you know, we have an obligation to tell our stories, and, and as we said, because it impacts and it changes mindsets. So thank you very much on that. Um, thank you, last slide. I think thank you. Good afternoon, you. My name is Prosper Adantai. I'm based in the Empire of the Northern Northern So. Thank you very much to Betsy and the team for bringing out this particular workshop. 
I think at the end of this process, we hope that everybody will be able to at least contribute in changing the narrative about Africa. The previous speakers have said about it, then I think we are right on point. So to put my presentation in context, you know, storytelling has been a very powerful tool that allows creators to connect with their audience both at the intellectual and the emotional level. What saddens me most is that some of these stories are largely unethical because they set a great and kind of harmful narrative about Africa. I do recall going up to the 1980s, most of the pictures we saw about Africa was dispersing images of children starving. Said images created a false impression that Africans have a begging board mentality instead of being able to solve their own problem. You know, most of these conversations revolve around areas where Africa is underdeveloped. So they usually depict some of these least developed areas in the poorest part of Africa. But there's also other modern form of advancement in the African continent, but those problems are mostly silent. So this has resulted in some kind of unbalanced view of Africa. So we are hoping that this particular presentation will put us in the right perspective when we are reporting stories on Africa. We in the media say we experience that the law. You go from if you want to highlight your problems, oh, these people are they are coming to take a picture and go and meet them for let them do not come back to that again. We hear that constantly. So I thought that is once we go to the community, please let's help provide some kind of support to the people. Some of them will share very emotional stories. They will be traumatic with the sexual abuse. If you have your connection to organization that can help provide them with counseling, please let's help them do that. So one be able to relate with them in that particular call. They therefore help us change the narrative that we have on that particular project. Then more importantly, whilst I conclude, we need to invest in ourselves and also the team we are working with. There's a lot of things that we need to learn and you know in this particular job it changes with the day. So every ideal ourselves to the right kind of training. So we can take training for ethics and how to provide answers of and also how to help one another people while we are helping the story. So as we add these values to our storytelling base, it helps us to break that or look more that we have with the people in the community. So to conclude this particular event, we want to come to so much better stories. You know, these days, innovation, creativity allows us to adapt. So there is no exit way of the story to be used particularly. What we must take note that we must adapt the story to the user center, and it should be demand driven and integrity. So when we are able to do that, the people will relate and they will search to get more of your, your story. We, are, we must also remember that for us to be discovered, everything we do must be targeted and it should be specific. And more importantly, it must serve a particular need. We are all in this storytelling business because we want to do an important work for the society. And that work begins with our ability to service someone's need to be informed. So the business of storytelling has to be resolving, it's helping people to solve problems at the state and to make decisions as they listen to these stories. So our storytelling shouldn't just be about oh, breaking news, exclusive interviews, long form, short videos, algorithm, data, or more articles. No, it shouldn't be about the content. It should be about helping people make better decisions. We also need to remember that Creators, we live and we die by the image we have created and also the funds we have created. So we need to also learn from that, then that will inform our kind of stories in itself. So one African leader made a popular note, and I want to end on that note, that we are not fully really responsible for the comments we make. 
but we are also responsible for the interpretation people make. So therefore, we have to make commitment so that we will be able to solve the fact for in that case for people who are So on that note, I want to thank you so much for giving me all of you. Thank wow. You. Wow. 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 Last session and we are done. Stand up, stand up, stand up. Look at your neighbor and say, I am ready to fire. <laughs> before you can make it. That is very wrong. So I had that mentality then. I wanted to travel. I wanted to go to France. So I was told that, that before I can go, I need to go to the embassy for an interview. Uh, you ask you some few questions. If you get it correctly, they give you the visa. And if you fail it, you are going back home. I said, no problem. I got to the embassy and I realized that the questions wouldn't be in English, but in French. <laughs> and I don't know how to speak French. I'm like, wow. So I got there with the third person. The first guy entered. We were asking just two questions. They said, Mr. Man, are you ready? He said, yes. They said, question number one. Just we palem kwe kwe la ve You guys say, eh? This is question number two. Je m'appelle vous kwe la ve You guys say, eh? Yes, you get that. Next question. The next person came. They said, are you ready? He said, yes. They said, question number one. Kwe kwe la ve You guys say, eh? They say, question number two. Just we pale pull up pull up the guy say and they say get out. Then he got to my turn. The woman said, Mr. Man, are you ready? I said, Mrs. Woman, are you ready? <laughs> they said question number one. Quoi quoi la vez pull up pull up? I said, eh? She said question number two. I said, hell, if I fail this last question, I'm going on. Today that French we must speak. Out. <laughs> <laughs> then the woman looked at me, she said question number two. Just we pale quoi la vez pull up. Then I calm down and combine different languages together. <laughs> I say, kwe kwe la ve fu, kwa siya fu. Then the woman looked at me, she said, eh? I said, wah wah. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that uh, if you don't tell your stories, someone else will tell them for you. And uh, it would be very risky to hear your story from another person. That is one reason why you need to tell your own story. And uh, I feel like what you say about yourself is more powerful than what another person says about you. The words that come out from your mouth. That is why I don't listen when people insult me. If someone says you're stupid, it is not as powerful than when you say you are stupid. So the stories you tell about yourself, you should be very particular about them because they are very strong. And uh, I feel like the most powerful stories come out from challenges. So the more challenges you have, the more stories you have. That is why Africa is filled with lots of stories. And I, I, I listened to you, you talked about originality. It is very, very important. When I started doing comedy, like some five years ago, I was hiding behind people's jokes. As a comedian, there's this fear of, am I funny, am I not funny? So at the beginning, you go look for jokes that most people haven't heard in your environment. Then you come and you crack it. Over there, it's funny. People will be like, this guy is funny. But deep down inside of you, you know that that is not your joke. But after some years, I think I had an experience that made me realize I needed to start writing my own jokes. 
So uh, I had a performance at a church. I had a little time to prepare. So I went on YouTube, took some jokes from Nigerian comedians, put it together. And when the performance was late, people were sitting on the floor. The video, and I posted a video on YouTube. Then I started getting comments. It's not your joke. It's not people's joke. It's this person's joke. After reading all this, then I sat down. And I'm like, I'm not going to do anybody's joke again. I have to sit down, understand comedy. I read books on comedy writing secrets, comedy bible, how to write jokes. That is when I started writing my own jokes and performing my own jokes and I felt better. When you say your own story, you feel better like inside of you and you feel fulfilled because you're doing something original. Moving on, um, uh, let's see. We are a product of our stories. We are a product of our stories. So you need to be very particular about the kind of stories you put out there. That is what people will relate to you to. And I don't know if you travel abroad, and I feel like there are some people abroad that they kind of, how they see Africa, they will be shocked if they visit Africa and realize that that is not Africa is. So the kind of stories you put out here are very important. So um, I'm here to talk more about the business aspect of storytelling. And I know most of us here today are people that have dreams and uh, would want these dreams to come to pass in some few years time. And I feel like talent alone is not enough. You need the business aspect of it. You need branding. And what is branding? I, I got this. I, I, for me, you said at the beginning when they said we should write what we want to take back. For me, I think very crazy. Like, if there's something more than out of the box, that is how I think. I want to be different. I want to do different stuff. So I feel like the word branding is more like the amount of lights you showcase in whatever you're doing. That is why at the beginning, before God started his brand, he said, let there be light. Because the creation was God's brand. Without the light, you wouldn't have seen anything. So if you're doing something and you're not shedding light for it, nobody would see it. So as a young mind, as a young creator, if you're working on something, you need to start thinking of how to shed more light on what I am doing. Now, I, I, I watched your, your slides and I saw your logo. Very beautiful logo. Now, before you start a brand, when you're sure that, okay, I have the talent of storytelling, and of course we've had several kinds of storytelling. It can be movie writing, script writing, it can be comedy, it can be, there are several like, ways you can tell your story. Now, the first thing you have to do is to look at your target market. Who can I affect with what I am doing? Who are the people that are interested in what I am doing? There are some things, like even storytelling is not appreciated in Africa mm. as much as it is appreciated outside Africa. So these are the kind of things you need. That's why you feel like some people are doing certain things and they are not progressing in what they are doing. It is because they are doing this thing at the wrong place to the wrong people, to the wrong audience. So you need to sit down and look at your target market. Who are the right people for this thing that I am doing? When you now know your target market, then you need to now sit down and create a brand identity. A brand that is solid. I remember when I started comedy, I. I finished, uh, I did information technology in school. When I graduated, I told my parents that I wanted to do like, event MC and stand-up comedy. My dad was like, how can you go to school? Or is it that you did not pass in the school that you went to? And after going to school, after all the school fees, you want to do comedy? Like, they don't really see, especially African parents, there are certain, uh, certain uh, professions that they say a big no to. So it is up to you to now prove to them that of course this thing can work and you have to make it work. I think recently, uh, I think last year I had an opportunity to go perform in the UK, the stand-up comedy event. 
And I told my dad, from the beginning, my dad didn't believe in the whole comedy thing, but he was just watching me. So recently I told him that, oh, I'll, I'll be going to the UK, and our family members who don't believe things easily. <laughs> so when I told him, he said, that when I get there, I should come here so that you can see it for so, so I'm like, okay. So I got there and I, I took snow and also called the video and I showed him for evidence and proof in case. I was like, oh wow, nice, nice, nice. Then when he cut the call, he went to my, my house in Ankara. Then he told my kid sister to play some of my comedy videos for him to watch. For the first time, my dad was watching my comedy videos and he was laughing. It means this is now, this was the time when the joke started becoming funny. <laughs> <laughs> so he watched, watch, watch, and at some point, my sister sang. So she was like, oh, daddy, can I play one of my uh, songs for you? She said, have you gone to the UK? <laughs> it's people that have gone to the UK that I want to be watching. <laughs> then uh, when I got back, I, for the first time, I gave my dad foreign currency. I gave him, I think, a thousand pounds. When my dad took the money, he went on his knees and he said, I should lay my hands on him. I'm like, oh, dad. He said, I should pray for him, that the God that did it for me will do it for him. I'm like, okay. Then uh, he stood up, he looked at me, he said, my son, I want to be like you when I grow up. <laughs> Shockingly, he went home. The next morning, he called me, 7 a.m. in the morning. I'm like, hello. He said, oh, my son. I just want some new jokes and I would like to go home. <laughs> I'm like, you want some jokes? For me, he said, no, the jokes are for me, I'll perform them. <laughs> so this is to tell you that wow. if you start doing well in whatever you choose to do, that is when the respect, the recognition will start coming. You get so it boils down to how you're able to position your brand. Now, I tell people, now is the best time to build a brand because you don't necessarily need to have a mentor that you see in person to push you. With social media, you can reach anybody. I'm sure most of the speakers here, you connected via social media. With social media, me, most of my gigs, most of the weddings I get are those that have seen my videos on social media and they liked it, and they contacted me. So take social media very seriously. Have a logo, a very beautiful, you have to check out a logo, a very beautiful logo that represents what you're doing. This tattoo also has a very nice logo. And the word represents, don't just take a logo because it is fine. Your logo has to interpret what you are doing, what you represent. After having the logo, now you have to, those days when I, when I started the brand, I, asked, I actually started with a drama at church. I was acting and I became quite popular at church. And uh, a guy, so funny thing is, when I started the drama, that, that's one thing about talent. When you're talented and you work hard towards building your talent, when it meets opportunity, it clicks. So while you're waiting for that opportunity, develop your talents. Now, I have always been working behind the scene, rehearsing, practicing. So one time I said I wanted to join the drama team, and they told me that I can join, but I have to be on probation for two months before I can act. I'm like, okay. So I attended the first rehearsal, and I made the call card. After church service, I'll share it to everybody in case you want to get married. <laughs> if you've married before and you want to renew your marriage, you can go like everything. So first of all, you need to you need to be so good at what you do that people cannot reject you, even your enemies. Like be so good at what you do that people cannot ignore you. Then start building a brand. Now, with the brand building, especially with social media, be very particular about what you post online in terms of pictures and videos. Now, for a speaker, or if you're the person that is, you're the face of your brand, how you present yourself is very, very important. Because you want to be, there's a saying that says you are addressed 
how you dress. Especially in Africa. In Africa, if you go into a bank wearing a suit, an expensive suit, they don't want to know if you wore that suit. The way they treat you is different. Tell you, can we give you tea or coffee? Like they treat you very well. But if you walk into the bank looking tattered, if care is not taken, they won't even like attend to you. That is to tell you how important your appearance is in the eyes of people. Now, social media, let's say for me, if I go somewhere and someone takes a picture of me and I look at a picture, if you take a picture of me with an Android phone, I'm not posting it. <laughs> that is not because I don't like Android phones, but iPhones have better qualities when it comes to videos and pictures. Of course, we have some Android phones that are also have those kind of high quality. That is to tell you that you need to post quality stuff of yourself. You might post something and see only two likes. But unknown to you that one million people have seen it. That is why you get more views on stories than posts. Have you noticed that? When you post a story, there are more people that watch it than when you post a picture on Instagram or on Facebook. Like people, some people can see they don't want to like. They don't want to make you feel like they are watching you. Some people can see and forget to like. So that is why you should be, sometimes when you're posting, you think, oh, I'm not getting likes. Forget about the likes. Just keep posting quality stuff. Moving on from that, uh, I think I've talked about your target market. I've talked about uh, the brand identity. Now, how to market yourself is also very important. So marketing is uh, a difference depending on what you like pushing or the brand you're pushing. For me, as an event MC, when I came into the industry as a, as a wedding MC, I, I looked at the industry and I realized that most of the MCs are particular about wearing suits and speaking fluent English. Most of the MCs. I didn't really see the fun aspect of it. It's, ladies and gentlemen, which I wear without much I do, if your hands are not too busy, blah, blah, blah. And I realized that weddings shouldn't be like that. Because if I'm doing a wedding and I want somebody to come speak English, I will employ my English teacher, not an MC. <laughs> if you're doing a wedding, you need fun. You need to create fun. So when you're building a brand, look at the people that have been doing what you're doing and look at where they are lacking, then push on that part. So I realized that the fun aspect in wedding was left out. Then I started bringing out wedding games. If you go on Facebook, TikTok, or Instagram, just type Okokobioko or official Okokobioko, you see some of the games. I've had wedding game that has over 22 million views, 10 million views. Like, I have one where I blindfold the bride or the groom and I let them hold different hands and couples are quite scared of that game, but it's all planned. At the end of, at the, end of the day, I wouldn't want a, a groom or a bride to go choose someone else on their wedding day. So everything is planned, but at the end of the day, it is used to drag the customers. So look at your market, look at what is lacking, and do it well and push it on social media before you know. Like, you just need one person to share, one important person to share, and that is it. Uh, let me. So when you've built, you've had your brand identity, you started building your brand, your, your marketing is going on well, you have to manage your brand. It is not easy. Keeping a brand for a very long time, consistently. There's nothing you do for a short period that stays forever. You have to keep doing it over and over again. You have to be consistent over a period of time. Check out all the people that have been successful. They didn't start yesterday. They've been doing it for a very long time. And I think if you want to go far, try to play, look for your strengths. You see, when I came, I introduced myself as an event MC. But I make you understand that I am a wedding MC. 
if you want to be very good at something, look for a particular niche, your strength. When it comes to corporate events, I'd rather a facilitator, MC, than me. But if you want your wedding to go on very well, if you want your wedding to go, I, I call myself Africa's viral MC. Because when I MC your wedding, it goes viral. So if you want your wedding to go viral, call me. Because I feel like that is where my strength is. And I am pushing it like my life depends on it. So ladies and gentlemen, the creative minds here, the young ones that are aspiring to become great in the nearest future, Discover your talent, build a brand around it, uh, market yourself well, post quality stuff of yourself. If the video isn't quality, don't post it. Don't be particular about the quantity. Be particular about the quality you put out there. And uh, lastly, what was my last point? Manage yourself very well. So thank you very much and have a wonderful day. Today to have participated in the African Youth in Storytelling Workshop. Now, um, this is an opportunity, or it was an opportunity to meet some um, experts in the space who are telling the story of Africans, the way they should be told by ourselves. I've learned a lot, but then one thing that stood out was one of the games that we played. And the reason why it stood out was because I realized something, the fact that we had to we don't just have to tell the story, but we have to make noise with our story. Own the narrative and make sure it is out there and confident about this story that we are telling. So I really enjoyed um, the workshop, meeting new people, and I'm looking forward to next steps and how this is going to go. And I know that I'm also going to implement whatever I've learned in telling the stories around me so that I'm going to be presenting Africa in the power place that it is. So my message to the African youth, we have so much that we can talk about. We should need, we need to move away from talking about, from the tired narrative of Africa and talk about what good things that Af that has made us or that has made you what you are because if Africa was a dumb place, a condemned place you wouldn't be that great person that you are so tell the story of how Africa has made you this greater person and just be loud about it because the world needs to hear what Africa has made of an Africa of innovation Africa of smiles, beauty and power that is the Africa I want to see, taking our place as we should. So hello guys, uh, my name is Derek and uh, shout out to Pisa for organizing this amazing conference. So we learned a lot here, we played fun games, uh, but one of the interesting things I would like to share with you that I learned today was we must share our African stories in exciting ways to present ourselves out there, all the way down to our communities and the amazing things that are happening there the climate uh, protections, the recycling, plastic recycling, and all the amazing things people are doing, the young ones, the aged, we are all promoting Africans. And we want everyone to keep promoting the African story in their own unique way, wherever they happen to find themselves. So I would like you to visit our social media platforms uh, with the tagline, Be Inspired with Stories from Africa, and get to learn the amazing things the whole African community is doing and what you can also contribute to help tell this story to the world. We want Africa out there and we want people to know the amazing thing happening and Bisa has given us the privilege to do that. Thank you, Bisa. Well, I've had an absolutely fantastic day here at Be Inspired. I had the honour and pleasure to be a guest and speak to young people and other stakeholders about telling the African story using creative elements and it was a really nice intimate workshop. I loved it, you know, where we actually discussed, we learned, 
we gained, we discussed, and we, we broke down all the different aspects of storytelling. So I'm really excited because I also had the opportunity to meet some really great young people who believe in the cause and believe it or not, I'm not young. <laughs> so when I see young people, it just really gets me excited because I see them as the future leaders and when they come to spaces like this and they're really thinking about the future and how important it is we become good storytellers good African storytellers. I've always said we need more African voices telling African story. And when the youth are thinking of not just writing, but writing in a good way to really make, you know, Ghana and beyond know the true authentic Africa, then they're doing a service. And I'm happy to say that I've made loads of new contacts, loads of potential partnerships, because we're in this together. So if you're listening, youth out there, be part of Be Inspired. Be the author of the pen. Be the change we wish to see. Thank you. Be inspired by stories from Africa. Be inspired with stories from Africa. Be inspired with stories from Africa. we are stay tuned and don't forget to subscribe to all our social media channels is displayed on the screen and don't forget to press that notification bell to receive updates when they come by Be inspired.